One of the greatest cornea doctors that I think I've ever met is a young guy in Austria named Martin Dierzamer. And I remember asking him relatively recently whether he thought refractive surgery was his favorite, most fun type of surgery. And he told me no, he thought refractive surgery was not fun. And the reason it's not fun is because it's too high stress. You have young people with high visual potential and commensurately high visual expectations and you're nervous and apprehensive doing any surgery. And I, I think I identify with that a little bit, you know, when you're operating on somebody trying to liberate them from glasses or contact lenses, it can be a high stress situation as opposed to when you're trying to salvage a sick eye. And the reason I bring this up is because there's a new type of refractive surgery that is gaining in popularity called the implantable contact or columnar lens, this EVO ICL. And people's apprehension about this technology does not relate to their suspicions about whether or not it works to correct people's vision. Their apprehension to embrace ICL has to do with fear over potential intraoperative complications. With any new technology, you have to learn things, and if you're learning them on your own, you're potentially scared of taking some lumps and bumps and learning some hard lessons along the way. When we started doing ICL surgery a few years ago, we had to learn many of these lessons ourselves, and I was hoping to share with you some of the things that we've learned, and in particular, our strategy now for easy and safe and simple ICL implantation, which has really made the operation a lot more enjoyable for us to perform. This is a patient that we operated on just a few hours ago in our office-based uh, surgery center in Birmingham, Alabama. This is a patient actually who is already an eye doctor. She is a, uh, an optometrist that we share patients with all the time. And so you have sort of this extra level of apprehension when you are working with basically a friend or a colleague. And you can see that the eye is moving around on the table and she herself is a little bit nervous before this case starts. And so uh, I'm gonna walk you through how we do these operations to try to make the patient as comfortable uh, and the operation as safe as possible. The anesthesia is topical, so this is just topical lidocaine, and we're irrigating the surface of the eye with a BSS, which is um, admixed with a very dilute amount of betadine. In this betadine, which is equivalent to 0.1%, is actually quite safe to use to irrigate the surface of the eye and guards against the potential catastrophic risk of intraocular infection, which is certainly at risk whenever you're doing surgery inside the eye. Now, once we have the eye rinsed there with a betadine dilute solution, we're gonna make our side port incisions. I'm using a 15 degree blade and I'm holding the eye with this Thornton ring and it provides just unparalleled control and grip on the eye to guard against the catastrophic mistake of a slip into the eye and dinging the anterior lens capsule. So just carefully, you can make two little side port incisions. Now, arguably, you don't even need any side port incisions to implant this lens, but I prefer to make them at the beginning, beginning of the case because they're nice to have in case you would need them later, particularly for something like flipping the lens inside the eye. This is a preservative-free lidocaine solution that I'm adding to the anterior chamber, and that just provides a little bit of extra anesthesia, and it pumps up the volume of the eye. It sort of stiffens the cornea a bit for me to make my main wound. I'm holding the eye again with this Thornton ring, and now I'm using a 2.75 millimeter keratome to make a relatively short uh, main wound temporally. It's nice to have a short wound as opposed to a long wound because otherwise the lens can become trapped in the wound during injection. So it's nice to have a relatively small wound that doesn't impede unfolding of the ICL. I'm deepening the chamber and adding anesthesia there with extra lidocaine, and now it's time to inject the lens. And this is one real pearl that we have learned that I would recommend. You can inject the ICL into the eye without first putting viscoelastic to deepen the chamber. And I learned this actually from a video online by Dr. Matt Ward. I had overheard anecdotally that there are surgeons putting ICLs in the eye without viscoelastic first, but it was Dr. Ward's video actually that really showed me that this is possible. A huge advantage of injecting the lens without viscoelastic already in the eye is you don't then have viscoelastic behind the ICL that you have to remove. 
You know, the problem after the surgery is you have to worry about viscoelastic being retained in the anterior chamber behind the ICL. But if you don't inject any viscoelastic behind the ICL, you won't have to remove it. So you can see here, just by gripping the main wound with some tooth forceps and with a slow, controlled injection, the ICL just opens up in the anterior chamber fine. It's not crumped against the back of the cornea. It's not smushed along the anterior surface of the lens capsule. It goes in no problem. The chamber stability is excellent. And now we have the ICL in the anterior chamber without any viscoelastic. The next pearl is here. We're going to go through the main wound, and I'm going to put in some pro-visc, a cohesive viscoelastic, which I prefer to OccuCoat. And the reason is, is that I'm confident that I can get all of the pro-visc out of the eye very, very easily, whereas OccuCoat is quite difficult sometimes to remove every little last remnant. This is an olive tip manipulator that I'm using. It's uh, commonly available from Duckworth and Kent, among other companies. And again, I'm using the main wound, which is very easy. It's very stable. You don't have to worry about trying to finagle in through some paracentesis. Just to tuck first these proximal two haptics and then the distal haptics across the eye. And you'll notice that even though I'm using the main wound for all of these manipulations, the chamber stability is excellent. There's no risk of collapse. I'm not dinging the anterior capsule or the back of the cornea. And this is so much quicker and simpler and safer than trying to wiggle back and forth through these one millimeter side port incisions. So now I have three of the four and now four of the four of these haptics tucked of this ICL. And now I'm just nudging the lens into its final centered position. And at this point, all that really remains is to remove the viscoelastic from the eye. The way that I was trained to do this is with irrigating solutions with a cannula and a syringe. And certainly that's possible, but it's so much easier and quicker and safer and simpler to remove the viscoelastic from the eye like you would with a cataract surgery just with the IA handpiece. Yes, it costs an extra 50 bucks per case, but it's so much worth it because you'll sleep better and you know for a fact that all of the viscoelastic is removed. So just that security, just that confidence that you're positive that you're not going to have a pressure spike in the immediate post-operative period makes things so much more comfortable and convenient for me to do this surgery. So it's quite easy then just to remove, or to spend as much time as you like removing viscoelastic. And once you're done, here we're just going to irrigate the main wound to verify that it's watertight. And I do still use half of a um, half of uh, 0.1 cc of moxifloxacin in the anterior chamber to guard against infection. So that's 0.05 cc. And I think a small volume here is important. Larger volumes have been associated with a sterile endophthalmitis, which um, of course you want to avoid whenever you're doing any kind of refractive surgery. So uh, this, this is how we've come to do our ICLs now. Um, this patient today had both of her eyes operated in exactly the same fashion. And since switching to this technique in which we use viscoelastic only after injecting the lens and using ProVisc and removing it from the IA has made the operation so much quicker and more enjoyable and more reassuring to perform. So give it a shot and see if you like it.